hello participants so i'll i welcome you all for the last day last session of our uh, one week online short term course on emerging trends and uh, technical developments in automated machines this session will be taken by dr kondaya garu and his topic is uh, quality assessment of 3d printed parts so before start of uh, the lecture let me introduce in very short about uh, dr kondaya garu uh, dr kondaya garu is uh, working as a professor in the department of mechanical engineering at uh, snist hyderabad and along with that uh, he is uh, the dean of uh, academics and in fact he is a very good researcher he is a very good teacher so i definitely believe his lecture will be very useful for us uh, kondai sir please uh, we'll start your session thank you dj kiran reddy for your kind introduction uh myself i am dr d kondaya uh, today my topic of uh, presentation will be on quality quality assessment of uh, 3d printed products and uh, specific with specific reference to i am just uh, switching off my video so that your band will be adjustable so with specific emphasis on fdm products so fdm all of you know fdm stands for fused deposition modeling and this is one of the most popular technologies which is being used by first timers and experienced uh, additive manufacturers also so coming to the brief introduction of the topic uh, most of you know about the 3d word 3d printing which is a popular and commercial name for uh, the more formal additive manufacturing technologies so additive manufacturing technology is uh, is a formal name uh, which is given by asme and 3d printing is a popular and commercial name for that particular technologies so as you know it is a technology which builds the product layer by layer so unlike the unlike the substructive technologies which uh, remove the material from a block and create the product here in the case of additive manufacturing here we are trying to build the product layer by layer so that uh, the complexity part is taken care of so what you see is what you print and in this figure uh, we have two technologies that is being shown to you one is your popular fdm fused deposition molding and the right side one the figure is that of the stereolithography sla process going ahead uh, first let us see some uh, very briefly i will be going into the basics of this uh, additive manufacturing basically this is a quick classification diagram of the additive manufacturing uh, systems or technologies that are available which are divided based on the nature of the raw material if you are using a solid uh, material uh, which may be in the shape of a wire sheet and so on they these are called as solid based system uh, and in solid based system we have the popular fused deposition molding fdm electron beam free form fabrication and uh, uh, these are a few fdm is uh, plastic wire plus arc additive manufacturing and these are uh, metal based likewise uh, if you go to powder based systems in powder based systems the, mo the most common one is uh, sls and then you have slm and a few other technologies and in liquid based system where the starting raw material is liquid uh, in a polymer uh, liquid and then you harden that liquid to form the material in that we have the stereolithography process which is most popular followed by the uh, most uh, time consuming dlp very labor laborious dlp process sla is the most uh, common and uh, popular process amongst the liquid based so with this classification let us go to the our area of interest the fdm process okay so in the fdm process uh, most of us know it is the simplest and commonly used additive technology it is also called as material extrusion process uh, and is a polymer manufacturing process here we are dealing with polymer manufacturing and this is also one of the most extensively used uh, rapid prototyping and product development process and it is used extensively because of the availability or affordability of the portable desktop printers so nowadays we see most of these printers being available at a very low cost um, price 
due to which this particular technology amongst uh, all the AM technology has become so popular. So this uh, FDM technology utilizes uh, mostly thermoplastics and uh, these thermoplastics uh, are generally of they may be of PLA, ABS, uh, then it can be polyethylene, HDP, so on and so forth. So any, any, any polymer material so which you can make it as a wire from and then you can extrude it comfortably they can fit into this uh, fdm technology and uh, if you see the application part of fdm also it has uh, wide applications in many areas so if you take some of these uh, areas they, these may include uh, the pharmaceutical areas it, it may be include the defense areas food toys most specifically and uh, it is a very promising technology so if you see in this figure i have given you the uh, evolution of a product through the fdm route uh, first uh, the cad file is taken then it is made into dot stl that stl file can gets converted into the path that is g code and then that g code is fed to the 3d printer which finally is going to produce the part and to look at the working stress of the fdm in a more detailed fashion we, ha we have this uh, flow chart here so CAD file, STL conversion, then slicing of the STL file, loading of the filament in the form of a spool, then uh, the filament is liquefied and then it is extruded and that extruded filament which is in a plastic state, glass transition state, it is uh, deposited on the build platform. And once it solidifies layer by layer, finally we remove that and perform some post processing where we try to remove the supports that are existing on the build product. So this is the working principle in brief. And this is a machine that actually performs as a task. So this is an FDM extruder machine and uh, you know in fdm there is a continuous supply of the thermoplastic material here so this is in the form of a filament uh, which is used in the form which this filament is uh, supplied through a spool which is utilizing for printing layers of material to build this part so after uh, this this spool is continuously supplied so it, it's an un un uninterrupted supply of material filament then it is heated to a semi-liquid state. So we call it as a glass transition state by a heating element, by a heater, which is inside the liqu uh, liquefying head. And uh, this glass transition will be in a semi-liquid form. It is extruded through a nozzle uh, onto a print bed platform. OK, so here you can see the filament, which is uh, coming out. So these rollers are a part of the system which helps us to supply the material to the entry of the nozzle so at the exit of the nozzle you can see this uh, liquefied plastic which is falling on the bed okay so the main working principle of stm is that the semi liquid uh, thermoplastic uh, filament material do not solidify immediately when it is extruded from the nozzle so rather these are semi-liquid uh, thermoplastics you can see here for a particular layer under construction which fuse together and finally they get cured under the room temperature so this is the basic uh, principle of any fdm technology which is called as uh, the layer extrusion process uh, now let us see the brief uh, history so that we'll understand why this uh, why we need to do this project at all quality assessment so the first uh, fdms have started in the year 1980s and uh, however uh, recently 1990s uh, after 10 12 years the uh, patent has expired with the result that a number of uh, users have come into picture number of uh, builders have come into picture who started making this uh, low cost 3d printers so this uh, low cost has attracted a number of uh, manufacturers and uh, today we can uh, assemble a fdm printer as low as uh, 30000 and uh, it can go the cost may even go up to the for a simple plastic it may go up to even one and a half lakh rupees that's the price variation that is available nowadays so because of that uh, low cost availability 
it has attracted many uh, uh, hobbyists who are building their own products and uh, branding them and selling them in the market so this uh, great variety of affordable 3 bit printers is, uh, which can be easily be assembled at your home with uh, the open source softwares it has gained pop popularity uh, so that everybody would like to acquire one printer for their own personal use now when so many devices are growing in the market when so many devices are growing in the market so it becomes uh, uh, essential for us it is a research topic uh, for uh, us because it, it helps us to assess the quality of these uh, printers and it helps us to target application also where we have to rectify the problems and give the necessary suggestions through our work so all this new 3d printers that are coming is finally helping us to make an assessment and finally derives us to make an assessment of the fdm products okay so if you look at the market scenario currently there are around 20 types of desktop printers that are available and uh, the challenge which all this uh, FDM printers that are available is to obtain precise dimensions then you obtain the required surface roughness dimensional uh, finish not only dimensions but, but the finish also finish requirements and the strength requirements of the components has become a great challenge to maintain these particular aspects the dimensions the finish and the mechanical properties so the quality of the printer products you know is greatly dependent upon the process parameters or we call it here it is a printing parameters of that particular machine so the basic objective of the present work is thus derived as uh, trying to assess the co quality of the 3d printed products for a specific fdm machine so the scope of the project can be increased beyond that as a starting experiment we have started with a printer where we have varied few parameters and then this work is being published so i am not in a position to divulge much of the details of the work that is going on so i will be re revealing the scratch of the work where a few important points which has led to this particular work i am dealing with so the major objective here is quality assessment and this uh, quality is assessed and then optimized to the wherever extent that is possible and the quality assessment methods that we have adopted in this work is also briefly discussed and um, if you look at the assessment methods some few assessment methods that i am going to present here are on roughness dimensional accuracy and tensile strength um, moreover i am also trying to uh, see the comparison uh, in this work we are also trying to see the comparison between a model which has been developed through cad and a model which has been developed through the reverse engineering process so that's also a good comparison that we have made and uh, when when we are, when i am saying i am dealing with the surface roughness so this is considered for different print directions and we even we have changed the nozzle sizes so the normal nozzle size is 0.4 mm but uh, we have even tried uh, the higher nozzle sizes of 0.6 mm and see now the print quality is varying while the dimensional accuracy of some common elements also common shapes were also examined not only changing the nozzle diameters here we have also worked on different uh, geometrical shapes here so the shapes may be curved shapes and the shapes may be straight shapes both the cases we have seen how the dimension is varying for the printer and what are the reasons behind them briefly and these shapes are uh, decided based on the thought of checking the dimensional accuracy as i said for sharp edges and uh, here also as i said um, one more aspect that we have studied here is we have uh, printed the product directly by taking the CAD design 
and second in an indirect way where we have reverse engineered an exist reverse engineered an existing product converted into a cad model and then we have printed it then we have seen how the quality is varying how the dimensions are varying in both these cases because uh, you know reverse engineering is a process where we capture a photo image and then we try to do the subsequent processing okay so uh, still a few other um, aspects are discussed uh, that we'll see in the coming slides now the basis for this work is uh, this particular uh, table which uh, gives what are all the process parameters the print parameters which are affecting an fdm process so here uh, close to 13 parameters are listed here and uh, these parameters along with their description and on the specific uh, variables they are dependent how they are derived the names are derived for example for one uh, process parameter i will tell you so uh, these are 13 process parameters the first one is the layer thickness second one is your build orientation then the raster angle the raster orientation so uh, in which direction you wish to move then air gap then the extrusion temperature that you are maintaining for the plastic material it is generally fixed in certain machines it is uh, variable then comes the print speed uh, then the infill pattern the infill density the nozzle diameter is also very important for the accuracy of the figure and some other parameters which you can easily refer to okay so the significance of each each and every parameter is uh, has to be analyzed some are significant some are insignificant so the significant and insignificant parameters you can find out from this uh, fishbone diagram so we call it as a cause effect diagram which is specifically uh, made for uh, the fdm process so in this uh, fishbone diagram the our end result is uh, the fdm printed parts and uh, for the fdm printed parts we are trying to take into consideration some very important uh, parameters which are going to affect so the parameters which are li listed in black okay the parameters which are listed in black have a significant impact on the corresponding part characteristics but the parameters which are listed in the, the red letter they are those uh, which uh, won't influence uh, to much needed extent okay so there are two things here one in black and one in red so the black parameters have more effect while the red parameters have less effect or insignificant effect whose uh, effect has to be worked out but uh, the rest of the parameters if you see in this um, cause effect diagram here so we, if we start from the top side uh, there is one uh, mention about the compressive strength then there is some mention about the printing time and uh, some there is about the bending strength and flexural strength and then in the bottom there is a tensile strength and uh, dimensional accuracy surface roughness so through this uh, visualization tool so this figure is taken from uh, reference paper which uh, helps us to decide our own parameters so this is a visualization tool so so here you can categorize the potential causes of the problem and then uh, once you identify you can dig to the root and find out the cause of that particular problem okay so we can uh, from this uh, figure itself you can understand the various parameters which are going to affect that particular factor suppose if you take uh, the dimensional accuracy which is there on the bottom second so the dimensional accuracy can be affected by the layer thickness so in, we, we are going to study the black ones the layer thickness the raster width the build orientation what's your extrusion temperature what is the print speed you are using and raster orientation so the dimensional accuracy effect on the part can be studied by optimizing these particular 
parameters layer thickness raster width so this gives an indication this helps us to understand which factor is the primary reason for the dimensional accuracy not being maintained similarly the other important parameter is surface roughness so here also you can see some uh, sub parameters which are affecting the layer thickness you can see the layer thickness is common amongst uh, all these uh, problems which are affecting the printed part okay so layer thickness is written first which indicates that it's the most prominent parameter which is going to cause problems in the printed parts okay so layer thickness then how is the build orientation okay so how we are orienting the part on the bed on the build platform then extrusion temperature and then the print speed so at what speed you are operating the head at what speed you are moving the head that's also very important parameter so uh, uh, this i have these two figures i have intentionally given so that you can understand fdm is the most popular most reachable printer for us so in that printer what are the specific parameters you have to look at so that you can build your future work on this particular parameters okay so this fishbone diagram is a very um, guiding diagram for us which helps us to clearly understand what are the underlying problems and uh, for those problems how you are going to address them by issuing uh, by addressing uh, by answering the causes to them okay so this is about the fish pond diagram now coming to the present uh, work that i am exposing to you so this work is uh, as i said we try to assess the quality parameters of a specific uh, shapes that are printed through a 3d printing machine the details of the machine the details of the parameters used also i am going to put before you uh, initially let us see the design part because the first step in any edo manufacturing process is creating the cad design okay so in this case the cad design is created using a software called solid works and you know it's a popular software for cad design so these are various elements shape elements that you see here and as you see the shape elements are one is a, a rhombus shape one is a square shape one is a circle one is ellipsoidal then we have taken a, a bit complicated shapes like the star one and we have also taken an alphabet called g here so these are the shapes that are, that are designed using the solid works uh, cad software so this uh, software it uses um, you can see the left side one here it is a sketching and this is the three dimensional extrusion so it uses a simple sketching tool we have used here like uh, the lines rectangles arcs spines circles etc we have used to develop the 2d models of the design and then this uh, solid works has a extrude feature and this extrude feature has helps us to convert that to 2d drawings to 3d model okay so the interface i have shown you similarly uh, one more uh, for the tensile test specimen also we have uh, created a cad design here and uh, through this cad design we have built the model file and this model file is then send this model file is then converted to the stl file so that it can be ready to be printed so the 3d cad models uh, are then say everything this second step which is stl creation happens in the Uh, software itself in the solidworks software itself there is the option where you can save the file in dot stl format so that dot stl so format is saved and then that stl format is uh, taken to the next stage wherein uh, we send it to the software called uh, the cura software 
so this cura software is a open source slicing software which accepts the dot stl as its input and uh, then this input is taken and it is converted into layers it is converted and produces the tool path in order to fill the layer and uh, rest the other process parameters relevant to the printing are all given in this cura software which is called as a slicing software okay so if you look at the process flow from the stl file so this entire box here yellow box reveals what happens inside that cura software what it performs what steps it performs for us to create the product so you can see it, some scaling is happening flattening orientation and tool path visualization is also available in the cura software and then you can also do the machine settings here so what what should be the resolution of your uh, model and what speed the extruder should operate and some temperature settings are also available here then uh, the slicing and infill pattern you can give so this infill pattern helps us to save the material and finally the tool path generation the g code which moves the extruder head to the in the desired path is also created so this uh, g code file is finally uh, read by the printer software which produces the part according to the instructions available in the g code okay so this uh, tool path which is uh, defined by the g code file is uh, generated for each layer of the product and these codes provide the instruction for the x y and z directions for the tool movement that is called the tool path generation okay so you have some figures here in the right side that um, tensile test specimen uh, is uh, oriented in three directions here so that's uh, how we are doing the quality check of the dimension okay so it is oriented it's having a flat orientation here then it is uh, oriented um, along two of its uh, ends and then it is oriented in a straight direction also so all the three orientations are done and uh, the specimen has been tested for its uh, strength because this is a ASTM sample and according to the sample um, dimensions it has been created okay so uh, while uh, creating this um, uh, while doing this cura software the support structures are also created automatically and uh, these support structures are especially needed when you have hanging elements and uh, in this particular specimen you don't have any hanging elements so you don't have some uh, bother about the support structures here and here is a screenshot of the inputs to the cura software that we have given so these uh, some of this uh, process parameters already you have seen in the earlier table uh, for the fdm process so those process parameters are visible here in addition there will be some uh, custom built the machine dependent uh, process parameters also so which are available uh, with the machine uh, handbook specific uh, printer handbook so we can understand those specific parameters also and if needed we can uh, tailor them or else we can stick with your uh, initial uh, uh, basic parameters like the layer height okay layer height or the layer thickness okay so so like this uh, we have taken some parameters uh, some default parameters and some parameters we have like the layer thickness we have varied and seen how it is impacting the model then uh, these are the uh, specifications of the print that we are given here so in this we find the filament material is uh, polylactic acid pla we have taken orange color the spool that was available then uh, layer height is 0.2 mn infill density is 100 percent 
so the layer height also we changed in some instances in field density all these are variable parameters only the nozzle diameter is changed from 0.4 to 0.6 and then uh, we have the nozzle temperature which is uh, we didn't uh, change this because uh, that particular machine doesn't have that uh, facility we can it can uh, deal with only pla and abs so for pla it is 220 degrees centigrade is uh, rated uh, temperature the printing speed layer weight all these parameters are also variable to certain extent and uh, coming to the machine that we have used the name of the 3d printing machine is a creality ender 3 3 max printer it is a very affordable printer and um, it, which can be easily uh, which can be easily understood and uh, you can easily print the required designs in this particular printer so the pls spool is attached to the printer and uh, there are some uh, 3d printer settings which are available on the input uh, module of the machine it is also given here 220 degrees centigrade is what we use and the print bed temperature is also constant here is variable between 70 to 90 it is measurable and it is uh, displayed also and uh, as i have seen the asm samples are printed in uh, three directions intentionally to understand their effect on the mechanical property that mechanical property that we are specifically targeting here is the tensile strength and as i said we have made also one uh, attempt here uh, to build the cad design from the reverse engineering uh, route also so initially we have taken a very similar a, a sample now in fact uh, here if you see here this sample is astm type 8 sample so astm type 8 sample means it is a it's it's not a metal it's a, a rocky material okay it is a blast material rocky material you can say cement like product okay where you can easily fabricate this using hand only okay so that material is taken and then uh, it is uh, placed on the rotating bed so that it is ready for scanning then uh, a scanning machine is used here which can uh, as the bed is rotating it takes the uh, images at a very fast rate and with good magnification and that image is uh, finally built by the scanning software so my voice is audible because uh, there is a power shutdown yes, here yes sir yes yes ah yeah okay so there is some power shutdown here so let me see no problem sir voice is audible sir yeah thank you sir thank you right yes sir audible sir okay okay so as i said this is a, a, a 3d scanner from which we have taken a the specimen image also so this is one route and the other route was we have printed the model also to both the routes we have tested the sample uh, i may not present the result here because as i said this paper is under um, uh, this work is under consideration but still i dare to open the material so that it will be quite useful for the participants here so then uh, this is our uh, the image of the 3d printed uh, shapes so uh, enough care was taken to ensure that the spacing between the shapes is uh, comfortable so that also has to be carefully worked out while working on the 3d printing machine so these are the same images but uh, taken in two different angles 
and uh, for this we have to measure the dimensional accuracy we have to define what dimensions you are measuring and uh, not only the dimensional accuracy we can also touch upon the surface finish aspects and many other, many other aspects can also be measured for these shapes and we can easily uh, gain very useful information about that printer quality okay so you can see here uh, in the figure if you closely observe lot of zigzag pattern also is there so that also you can uh, uh tailor to your uh, requirements if it is needed okay right so coming to the measurements part so this is written under the inspections here so in uh, if you take the here i'd like to say a few words uh, if you take the injection molding uh, route the in injection molding all the parameters are very fortunately controlled by the mold itself so the operator has a very little role uh, in injection molding where the plastic parts are made uh, so there the mold design is very critical the mold design is very critical so once the mold is properly designed so the operator of the machine need not bother about the quality of the product so the quality of the product is definitely going to come out very good if the mold quality is good okay but uh, here unlike in 3d printing the entire burden of maintaining the part quality is dependent upon the operator itself so he has to control the parameters say the printing speed whatever is um, so uh, how much amount of material you are depositing the layer height okay and uh, the support structures the the time that you give for the product to cool down the post processing all these activities has to be individually taken care by the operator itself okay so you have to be very very careful here when it comes to 3d printer uh, because the quality entire quality of the product is dependent upon the parameter setting so that is uh, the basic uh, and fundamental difference between injection molding uh, part quality uh, and uh, the 3d printed part quality so anyhow the volume is uh, not comparable so injection molding means you know how much volume can be taken out uh we are talking about here the quality aspects okay so the quality aspects also you cannot compare injection molded part and fdm part okay so unless uh, you carefully uh, do lot of trials and optimize the parameters you are not assured of a good part quality in fdm now how these uh, things are measured so we have um, a high magnification uh, optical microscope and uh, this microscope high magnification microscope helps us to calculate the dimensions very accurately for all the printed parts but uh, you have to define uh, what is the specific dimension you are targeting as so through this optical microscope also not only the physical dimensions you may have some data regarding to the print quality also so if you can see this figures here the, which are taken from the optical microscope high resolution so you can see there are some uh, uh, layer to layer separation also is uh, available to you so which are some of the defects so all the parts that you see here they are they, they are printed with the different process parameters okay so you may uh, so so they are, they look alike you can see the numbers are also written here 1 2 3 4 so they are not printed with the same parameters but the parameters have been varied so the nozzles have been varied right the, um, the printing speed has been varied the layer quality has been varied okay so whatever possible through that machine we have extracted and we we, we have done all the experiments to test the product part quality okay so as an i am showing you here some of the defects that are visible through the microscope so you can see the opening up of the layers so th this may be some incomplete fusion that is happening layer layer which may be due to the high printing speed you are using for each layer okay so like this uh, uh, you can assess the quality of the product through the microscope itself some visual assessments so some of the measurements that we have made and the components are listed here how we have measured what measurements we have taken so we have, we have yes here i am showing the very common measurements okay so some additional measurements can also be taken uh, apart from this that are mentioned here to identify to increase the accuracy of your 
component quality okay so these are basic measurements that i am showing here so uh, so if you take the uh, the square shaped here so one and two is there so uh, so a simple measurement so here the major axis and minor axis uh, similarly for a rhombus also so the major uh, uh, i can say this is a major uh, diagonal and the minor diagonal and similarly for the star shape also certain important uh, one and two one and two means the first one and the second one okay and uh, some results i am presenting here for uh, some of the components uh, as i said i am restricted to mention all the things here because of the limitations okay so square one and square two here you can see the cat dimension was a square uh, here uh, square one it is printed with with some layer height change uh, with some fixed uh, process parameter so we got a cat dimension that means it, the original uh, design dimension was 15 on the system but when we print out and measured it was uh, 14.97 for the square it is coming out very nicely similarly square 2 was printed with a slightly different dimension and here there is not much error deviation from the modeled uh, part it is only 0.8 uh, again for the diamond also it was coming out properly for one of the diamonds similarly circle it is uh, 15 14.92 and for the oval shape uh, again uh, there is a increase so the dimension has decreased here uh, the star shape uh, it's not presented here and uh, the, for the letters also there is not much deviation uh, except uh, for some of the letters g1 and g2 okay so th this table is only indication for you that how do we do that uh, measurement how to do the comparison and how we calculate the error percentage for that particular process parameter that you are targeting okay and uh, this is uh, one more uh, error measure error measurement so this is with respect to the print direction so in some case it is printed inclined it is printed normal and it is printed parallel so these are the technical parameters available with the machine with the printer so you have to check the directions there inclined means in which direction it is normal means which specific uh, normal and parallel so the measured thickness is uh, 2.98 and the actual thickness so it has come out very nicely so whatever you have uh, designed the design is getting replicated and uh, the causes have to be hunted for so what is the cause what is the cause for not deviating means there, there is some parameter which is uh, fully controlling it okay so that parameter has to be carefully understood but for parallel you can see the error is 15 percent error is coming so that means for this particular shape okay this shape so uh, this shape is uh, mostly the astm sample that sample is there so for that shape the when you keep it parallel it is coming 15.3 percent error and uh, these are measured these shapes are measured here okay and uh, the error analysis is done so and finally the, uh, the error is calculated by usual simple arithmetic uh, process cad value minus measured value divided by your designed value will give the error percentage and uh, similarly you can do the roughness uh, measurement also which is very important to understand the finish of the plastic component so we have a handheld uh, surface roughness meter so most of you must be aware of this uh, meter mititoyo sj301 model very accurate one so here the sampling length was taken as a 0.8 uh, mm so this is sampling length will ma match the uh, standards for the plastic material so if you look at the value the units are in microns obviously mum and for some of the shapes the values are presented here okay so square diamond you can see uh, 5.652 and again for square 2 it has increased to 6.5 so here uh, we have not yet optimized here we are just trying to state the values uh, these are not any optimized value we are not fixed any target uh, surface finish value here okay so diamond one diamond two, so several shapes we have taken and and you know we have done that uh, printing process uh, 
roughness calculation process okay so uh, this comes to end of my uh, presentation here uh, i have not uh, should acknowledge that i have not completely discussed the entire uh, methodology the entire uh, full methodology i have not kept here because as i said this is under consideration so i have just given you a nutshell uh, uh, overview of what 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 can be what was happening at our end what we are what have we have been doing uh, with the available resources uh, how to generate the research work and how to, how to simply um, create uh, uh, a paperwork for uh, research paperwork so that it can be publishable in a quality journal okay so finally coming to the concluding part here so this uh, 3d printers uh, as you know they have become uh, home machines now they are easily available and uh, unlike uh, other manufacturing process uh, this 3d printing that are being rapidly made at low cost they definitely have to be uh, checked for their quality Uh, especially when you are targeting the accuracy accuracy of the products and uh, in this particular article or in this work we have suggested some simple procedures just just we have made some dimensional shape and roughness inspection so which can be used to characterize the machine and then we can also optimize the system optimize the process so this is a preliminary study that i have proposed okay and uh, this study can also be used for comparison of different 3d printers and uh, based on the study some results are also have presented here okay so the error percentage uh, is varying from 0.53% in some cases to 5 4.2% and the reasons behind them have to be worked out so you can find out the reasons only when you put in black and white what are the parameters actually are using for each and every shape and then you can easily understand once you put them in a graphical format you can know where it is going wrong and you should also have a target uh, error percentage so if you have a target error percentage it becomes more easy for you to analyze the results okay the optical images uh, that were taken also helps us to understand the uh, quality problems as I have, i have shown you in some of the figures there so in some of the figures you can see the uh, two two of the layers are not meeting there so that errors also can be addressed and then the fusion of the filament material among important portions so that's what i was talking about and uh, besides this um, uh, parameters um, other parameters can also be included the aesthetics aspect that is also very important uh, how do you look the product from the aesthetic point of view okay so you, you cannot have a part which has raised edges which has bent edges okay and which has some curvature defects so that aesthetics has to be worked out so you, you should you should know how a good part looks like and then when you have printed a part you, have, you should be able to uh, quantitatively compare uh, your part with the ideal part and then you can give some comment about the aesthetic aspects okay so that's the end of my presentation uh, thank you one and all uh Thank you, uh, Dr. Kondai Garu, for giving this wonderful uh, presentation on this.